find this story. Uh, this is Caitlin Clark stuff to me is just fascinating. It's got a racial component. It's got a it's got a gender component. Um, Gina Oriema, who's a great coach, he's the best women's basketball coach of all time, said uh, Caitlin Clark was set up for failure. Calls out the delusional fans. He went on to say, listen, these people are so disrespectful and so unknowledgeable on the Dan Patrick show to give women's basketball a bad name. This kid was set up for failure right from the beginning. She's not built for the physicality of the league yet. She's not quick enough to get away from the physicality. So let me start by saying uh, fans are all delusional. Fans overvalue their own players. They blame refs for every loss. I mean, you ask an Ohio State Buckeye fan, they've never lost a game. It's the refs. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's a conspiracy theory. It's just, that's fans. I, even my smartest friends, they're blaming the refs. The number one pick, let's start with there. The number one pick in all pro leagues does not turn things around year one. You know how many games the Spurs won this year with Wemby? The same number they won last year without Wemby. Andrew Luck in 2012 is the only guy that has walked into this league and carried a crappy roster. Joe Burrow, year one, two and seven and one and got hurt. Trevor Lawrence, 3-14, and 14, awful. Kyler Murray, 5-10-1, and 1, led the NFL in sacks. Again, Wemby, Spurs this year were 22-60. and 60. I think that's what they were the year before. <laughs> they were just more fun to watch with Wemby. So everybody take a deep breath. There's a racial component here. Yes, there is. There's a gender component. And, 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 and let me talk about that. This is hard for a lot of people. I'll speak slowly. We do treat women differently. We're more protective. Do you know women were not allowed to run marathons in the Olympics until 1984? There was no science to back that. They weren't allowed to run the Boston Marathon until the late 60s. There was no science for that. We felt protective. Women were not allowed to box in the Olympics until 2012. Guys have been boxing in the Olympics since 1904. It actually speaks well of us. A lot of men in the media feels different when people are picking on Caitlin Clark. Dads are tougher on boys, right? Toughen them up. Get them ready. The reality is some of this, there's a racial component. There's a gender component. And, but I will say this, Caitlin Clark, Larry Bird, she's a trash talker. She's tough. She's got a little swag, a little swagger to her. Not that she's brought this on, but she's built for this. The media so far is not. It's okay, but I understand it. This was somewhat predictable. A rookie going into a pro league is going to be overwhelmed. Wemby, Kyler Murray, Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence. And these are like, Trevor Lawrence is like an all-time talent. Caleb Williams this year. I think if he wins eight, they should have a parade in Chicago. If they go eight and nine, he's going to have a four interception game. That's the way it works. But it could be the Olympics. It could be marathon running. It could be boxing. There is a a gender component here where it doesn't feel quite right. I keep hearing they're picking on her. And maybe they are. They're targeting her. Yeah, probably. There's a money component, a financial component. She's got, you know, 28 Million dollar shoe deal and 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 multiple uh, endorsements. So there's some jealousy. Prove it. Uh, but again, I'll say it. I I I think she's built for it. She got a little Larry Bird trash talk. Uh, she kind of gets in your face. She's not intimidated by it. She's never complained about it. Uh, I don't think you can, I, I don't necessarily think you can blame fans. Caitlin Clark was discussed yesterday by Gino though on the Dan Patrick Show. If you're a college player and you're a great college player, like Caitlin was, the delusional fan base that follows her disrespected the WNBA players by saying she's going to go in that league and tear it apart. These people are so disrespectful and so unknowledgeable and so stupid. So the kid was set up for failure right from the beginning. But nobody's. Pre- it's always a great idea to call the fans stupid. Tell everyone, the fans, the little fans that you have in the WNBA, because the WNBA is a joke, and now you actually have Caitlin Clark fans who are excited to watch Caitlin Clark, it's really smart to call them delusional and stupid, because that's exactly how you build a fun, exciting fan base. Just call everyone stupid. That's, that's really smart.
printing, you know, Diana Taurasi was right. This kid's on the wrong team. She's got the wrong skill set to handle the physicality of that league. And she's a rookie. There's a huge target on this kid's back. She's just not built for the physicality of this league. Uh, for the record, I don't think fans disrespected the WNBA. They didn't watch it. Yeah. And if you don't watch the WNBA, and James Jones pointed this out, he has been watching it for years. Professional men's basketball. Men jump over other big men and dunk it. You'll see an occasional WNBA breakaway dunk, but it's not as vertical a league. It's more grounded. And it's more pushing and shoving to score. It's more the manipulation of bodies. In the NBA, you can't stay in front of anybody. Everybody's too quick. The bigs are shooting threes. The little guys are flying past you. And then jumping over you and dunking. That's not part of the WNBA's game. This vertical nature around the basket, jumping over people. So it's a push-shove game. And But I don't think the fans are necessarily any more delusional than other fans they just don't watch the WNBA until now, and now they feel like she's being bullied. And I think it's something that we're just more comfortable with young male athletes getting pushed around, sacked, rub your face in the dirt a little bit. I think people probably are a little bit more comfortable, guys, dealing with that. So I think there's a lot of components here at play. Money, race, gender. But I'll say it again. Caitlin Clark appears to be built for it. She's not complaining about it. I mean, she's averaging 16 points a game. I think five rebounds, six and a half assists. She's not shooting terribly well, 38%, but it's realistic to think next year she'll be at 18 and a half a game, six rebounds, seven and a half assists, shooting 43%. That is a kind of a natural ascension or, or, or a ascension of her skills. And I, I think she's been kind of what we thought. She can get her own shot. She's a hell of a shooter. She is a playmaker. She sees the floor, and it's a bumpy year one. Okay, there's a lot to unpack there, and I really want to get to it all. Because Colin said a few things. One of the things that really stood out to me was this idea that men are protective of women, and that's why they couldn't box or they couldn't um, run in the marathons and, and things of that nature. Let's be very clear here. that were, The men were not protecting them. It's called oppression. There's a huge difference, okay? It's, it's, there's a difference between protecting women and oppressing women. Men were not being protective of women. Were they protecting women by not allowing them to vote? Like, what, like, what are we talking about here? So, no, 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 no. That, that's called oppression. Let's be very clear there. Um, but that's just the one side note. Yes, of course, there's financial incentives as well as racial connotations there is a tremendous amount of jealousy and envy of Caitlin Clark, of her popularity. And people want to turn her popularity into a race thing. And I refuse to have that be the case because we live in a world, in a country in America, that's what we're focusing on, where all of the athletes that are worshipped, that are worshipped from every single gender, age, generation, race, wherever, black athletes are at the top of the top of the top. Michael Jordan is still worshipped, and the guy hasn't played basketball in decades. LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Patrick Mahomes, the most famous NFL athlete right now, arguably the most famous NFL athlete of all time at this point, quite frankly. What color skin does he have? Like, what are we talking about here? So this idea that Caitlin Clark is only popular because she's white and now the white people like her is such an insane take. I grew up with a gigantic poster of Allen Iverson on my wall. The dude doesn't look like me at all. I wanted cornrows so badly, but I wasn't allowed because you're not allowed. But so it's so this idea is just is just is so frustrating to me. It it really really is. It's what it boils down to is envy. A lot of the women out there are envious that Caitlin Clark has immediately made more money than all of them in their entire careers. Caitlin Clark doesn't need to go overseas to try to play money, to make extra money. 
She's already getting paid. And yes, she has the popularity. People actually want to watch her play. And now to make sense of that, they try to put it through race, which is just nonsense. It's nonsense. It's race baiting. And it's obnoxious. It's obnoxious. Because we, we talk about how we want to live in a moral, in a more socially accepting world and, and all of this type of stuff. And yet then we want to point out race every five seconds, every chance we can. And it's just not the reality. Okay. And Anthony Edwards came into the league 22 years old and people were losing their mind over him. More people were rooting for Ant over Jokic. Jokic is a big, gigantic white dude. Okay, they were rooting way more over for Ant than Luca. Pretty sure Luca's a white dude. So like, it, it just we just want to make stuff up, and it's just nonsense. John ja Morant was poised to be the base of the league. Do you see what he looks like? So it's just it's just absurd. Shohei Otani is the most popular baseball player now. Probably the most popular baseball player for decades. He's not white. He's as Japanese as it gets. So this, and he doesn't even speak English and had a whole gambling um, uh, scandal. So I just hate when they just make this stuff up. And it's just, it's just so frustrating to me. It really, really is because we can appreciate Caitlin Clark's greatness, her, her draw to fans, the excitement and have it not be a racial thing. Why does that even have to enter the, the conversation? They did the same thing with Steph Curry. Steph Curry is, is just arguably the most likable basketball player of all time. One of the most likable athletes of all time. And his game is just so exciting to watch that it did bring all these new faces into the league. Men, women, boys, girls, old, young, whatever. And they loved it. People that were 10 feet tall, people that were 2 feet tall. And they loved it. And what did they try to say? Oh, it's because he has lighter skin. So white America is more comfortable with him. That's just nonsense. Get out of here. LeBron James is the most famous athlete on the planet. Along with Patrick Mahomes. Get out of here. It's just nonsense. It really, really is. CJ Stroud, instant success. Instant fame. fame, uh, fame. Caleb Williams. People losing their mind over Caleb. Hasn't even played an NFL snap yet. So, it's just absurd. And now the defensiveness about defending Caitlin Clark. Like what Colin was trying to say, that we're more defensive and protective of these women athletes. That like if this was a guy, maybe there wouldn't be as much of a story. I think it's less of that and more that this is just the story of Caitlin Clark. And they want to keep talking about Caitlin Clark because it drives views, drives clicks, drives subscribers, drives ratings. And this is just a story. If Caitlin Clark was balling out, then that's what everybody would be talking about. If she was, if she went on an eight game win streak, then everybody would be talking about that. But since her, her season is going a little rocky and there is all that jealousy and her taking all this physical abuse and all of this, that is... Um, that is more the story. So I don't think it's like people are being extra defensive. And I don't think we need to be extra protective of these women athletes because I don't think these women need to be more protected than anyone else because I don't think women are inferior emotionally from that regard. So I think, right, they should be treated exactly like men. Obviously, that that. It implies having dignity and respect, but also understanding that you play professional sports and you have fans that are extreme and say and crazy people on the internet saying awful things. It just is what it is. I, I don't condone it. I don't think it's great. I don't think I wish we lived in a world where that didn't exist, but I recognize we don't live in a utopia and that is the world we live in. And so those things are going to happen. And so they should be treated the same as men or, or, or women, that it shouldn't be, it should be no different in that regard. I don't think women need to be extra protected because these athletes are are as hard as they get and and are and are bona fide athletes. So um this conversation around Caitlin Clark has been really interesting to me from the moment it really began 
the whole drama between her and Angel Reese, and I kind of did a whole thing breaking that all down. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just it is funny when we point that out of all these rookies. Patrick Mahomes didn't even start his rookie season, right? Like we we know Wembenyama is supposed to be like the greatest thing ever. People are already are saying, could he be the goat? Right, one day, and right, the Spurs did nothing this season, nothing. So I think it is new fans expecting Clark to have instant success where that confusion can lie. And and they have to be educated of, hey, this is the way it goes, which is fine. But to also blatantly call them stupid and disrespectful. Oh, man. I, I mean, imagine running a business, a food, a food, a restaurant and just saying all you people are stupid. It's just like I. Oh my god, I, I, I just can't. It's one of the biggest reasons why I started this channel. And it's why I don't say to these people, you're so stupid. And I talk on the comments all the time, and I never, ever tell people how stupid they are and how dumb they are, even when they're mean to me. Even when they come at me and say that I'm so dumb and I'm a moron, I don't know anything that I'm talking about, I still will say, yeah, sure. I just say, I just say LOL, uh, a juggling emoji. Like, I, I just don't engage in it. Um, but I will never come back and say, you know, you're so dumb, you're so stupid, you're this, you're that. Um, because I, I recognize what this is and it's just, it's just absurd to just bash an entire new, to a new mass of fans that are excited to watch, to watch athletes that are trying to grow the sport. What does growing mean? It means getting more fans, more eyeballs on the screen, watching it, engaging with the content. Call, keep calling them stupid. Keep calling them dumb. Keep calling them disrespectful. See how much they stick around. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think about Caitlin Clark and this whole thing and her not being built for the physicality and, 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 and the, the media attention that she's been getting and the jealousy, the money, and the gender, all that type of stuff? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something you know, that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much. See you next time.